Good morning. Good to be with you today as we begin a new series of study. Uh, today we will be in Philippians, then moving to Colossians, and finally uh, Philemon. Uh, this is a great study, these letters of Paul, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to studying them with you. Uh, today we are covering the first part of uh, uh, Philippians, the first uh, 11, 12 verses. And at this point, it is about the year 60 or 61, and Paul is in house arrest at, in Rome. Uh, he can see people and evangelize as long as they come to him, and he, uh, he ministers to them as they come, but he, of course, is in house arrest and can't leave the house. He is writing this letter. The, the title of the lesson is Joyful Prayer, and he is writing this letter uh, as a statement of thanksgiving to the people in, in Philippi, the church there. He had not worked with them in about 10 years and, and longed to be with them, uh, thought about them often, and, and prayed for them. As, so, as soon as the church there learned about Paul's imprisonment, they, uh, they gathered up some funds for him, and, and uh, the, one of the leaders in the church, Epaphroditus, uh, delivered the funds to Paul, and, and Paul is writing this letter as an expression of thanksgiving. Interestingly, this letter uh, has no Old Testament quotes in it at all. Uh, Paul begins this letter as he does in most of his letters and is typical of the way letters began uh, during that time. Uh, Paul begins in the first verse by saying, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Paul here uh, uh, identifies himself as a servant rather than as an apostle. And he includes Timothy in this uh, initial statement, not that Timothy is a co-author of the letter, but uh, Timothy is an associate of his. Uh, Paul, like Timothy very much uh, called him a son in the gospel, and, and so Paul is identifying with Timothy as he talks to the church in Philippi, and he is thanking them uh, for this gift. He addresses himself as a servant or a slave uh, rather than as an apostle, and he addresses uh, three groups, the saints there, the Christians there, the overseers, and the deacons. These overseers might well have been bishops or elders. Epaphroditus uh, was probably one of those that brought the offering to, to Paul. And so Paul is, is expressing his gratitude to these uh, three groups. And he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is, is again, a typical statement, a typical greeting by Paul, but it's important the order that it comes in, grace and peace, rather than the other way, because without God's grace, we cannot, of course, have God's peace. And Paul also is known in his letters for uh, having very lengthy sentences, and we will see an example of this in, in uh, this letter. But he says, beginning in verse 3, and it's important to understand now that Paul was 800 miles away from Philippi, and he still followed and still prayed for and was still engaged in the church in Philippi. 
but more importantly, despite the fact that Paul was in house arrest or in prison uh, in, in uh, Rome, they stuck with him. They didn't drop him because of his imprisonment. And so they, even having 10 years passed, uh, loved Paul to the extent that they collected this offering for him. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So Paul is rejoicing in his prayer for them and for his God. And Paul is is intense in his heart. He is filled with joy for their partnership. And this partnership can uh, sometimes be interpreted as kononeo, which means fellowship and uh, the joining together for prayer and for fellowship and sometimes for a meal. But the partnership in the gospel from day one until now. Now, this was a, a very church, a small church there in Philippi. It wasn't large enough to uh, become a synagogue. And there, one of the earlier uh, converts there was a lady by the name of Lydia. Uh, she was a very wealthy lady. And this is where the believers there, the, the uh, fellow Christians, met was in her home. And so as Paul is writing this letter, of course, he is thankful, he is grateful for the work that Lydia is doing and providing a place for uh, these uh, young Christians to meet. He says uh, in verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ. So Paul anticipates uh, the second coming of Christ. He anticipates that it will be soon, and he is comfortable in his belief and confident in his belief that the good work, that is the planting of the church and the growing of these Christians, he is confident that the good work begun in them will be carried through to completion. And when he says in verse 7, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. Now, I don't take this as being uh, apologetic or defensive or anything. I just think that this is a very affirming statement. and. And if I were a member of that church in Philippi, I would be greatly encouraged and, and lifted up by these words of Paul that, that say, you know, I'm still praying for you and I still uh, love you and I long to be with you and, and I'm confident in the work that you're doing. What a great letter of, of encouragement from Paul to these uh, to these believers. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart for whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. We're working together. Even though I'm 800 miles away and I share the gospel on occasion when someone comes to visit me and seeks my my input. And you all are 800 miles away, but we're working together faithfully in expanding the gospel. All of you share in God's grace with me, and that's true with all of us, whether we are are Christians on the East Coast or Christi Christians on the West Coast or wherever we might be, our prayers are lifted for a common purpose, 
and to a loving God, just as in the case of Paul. And then verse 8, it says, God can testify how I long for all of you and with the affection of Christ Jesus. This affection, this word, is a Greek word which means agape. It is, it is unconditional. It is a love that reaches out to all people of all colors, of all uh, dialects, of all attitude, of all purposes. It is an unquenchable uh, love that God has for his children. It is a love that doesn't discriminate one way or another. It is a, a fierce and, and loving God that, that Paul is referring to. He says, how I long for all of you with the affection, the love, the agape love of Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 9 to kind of uh, wrap this up, to kind of summarize what he is saying, he says, and this is my prayer. This is my prayer, this joyful prayer that he has. This is, is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Now, this points out to us that faith is just not sentiment. It's just not a feel-good proposition. That your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, depth of understanding. And then he says, so that. So that, and that reveals a point of purpose. Here is why you want to increase in knowledge and increase in insight. So that you may be able to discern, to understand what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Now, in... in uh, Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, in the 10th uh, chapter, uh, Paul writes this uh, definition of, you will, of blameless, at least as far as he is concerned at that point, and that blameless is to not cause anyone to stumble, to not create a distraction in one's faith, in one's faith journey, to not cause someone to stumble, but to conduct ourselves in a way that would, would give glory to Christ and cause people to recognize and realize that we are children of God and walking with our Savior so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. And that's the thing that, one of the things that we need to remember in our faith walk, and that is that, that we don't do this to glorify man or glorify ourselves or get, get points. We do this for the glory of God because we are here for His purposes, to serve Him. And I just pray that as we go about our week uh, until we gather again to continue our study, that the words of Scripture, uh, the glory of God would guide you as you walk day to day with a Savior that loves us and came to save us from our sins. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this day that you've given us, for this, this time to begin the study of uh, uh, this book of Philippians. Father, we pray that as Paul prayed, that we would 
acquire a greater insight, a greater knowledge that, uh, that we might not cause anyone to stumble as we live our lives day to day. Uh, Father, you are a loving God and you have, have come to us and you have provided for us uh, your word that, that guides us, that is the fulfillment of all knowledge, that, that addresses any problem that we might have. Uh, Father, today I pray for those that might be in the hospital, might be sick, might be dealing with financial issues, those that might uh, have questions about their faith. Father, I just pray that you would surround them with your love, surround them with your care. Now, Father, I just pray these things that you might be lifted up and glorified. And it is in your name that we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.